and we are live. So thank you all for joining me today. Um, you are watching eToro's How to Understand the Risk Score webinar. Uh, my name is Annie, for anyone who doesn't know me, and I head community here at eToro. Um, I wanted to take the opportunity today to walk you through the risk score. Um, we'll dive a little bit into how it's calculated without all the technicals. Um, and I'll also say, share some practical tips on how you can proactively reduce it, um, both for yourself and for anyone who may be copying you. So the first part, of course, the, the main question is, what is a risk score? In short, your risk score is a scale found both in your stats and on your profile that measures from one to 10 and essentially looks at your market exposure. Um, now, what that really means is it considers a few things, a few factors, um, which are the direction that you are trading in, meaning if you are, if you, in your portfolio have several markets and you're diversified and um, you know you, your, your risk score is higher than what you think it is, it's likely to do with the direction you're investing in. So if you have a GBP USD, Euro USD and um, New Zealand dollar USD position, but they're all long, you are overexposed to the dollar in this situation and that will bring your risk score up. Um, the second point, which slightly ties in a little bit with the leverage and the equity, so, so the, the next two um, are somewhat related, is the volatility of an instrument, um, which is pretty straightforward. It's, uh, it's measured um, on an average, on a daily average um, in terms of volatility. And after this webinar, I will actually on my own wall um, share the most volatile instruments, in fact, um, and there may be some surprises in there, so keep an eye out for that. Um, and the last point, which is le le leverage and equity, is pretty straightforward. It's, um, you know, your, your higher leverage is obviously going to expose you more, but at the same time, it's worth bearing in mind that we actually consider units. Um, so an example here would be, a euro USD position, um, say $500 at five leverage is going to give you two and a half thousand units. And if you are thinking this is too much for you, it's, it's, it's too much of a, of a uh, monetary value and you say, I'm going to put in $25 instead, but use 100 leverage, you're still in with two and a half thousand units. And so you're uh, your exposure in terms of risk is still the same. Um, reducing your leverage is, of course, the, the first step, but at the same time, you want to be conscious of your units that you're using, and, as, and equity um, is, is a big one there because you want to leave money available um, for later. So this is, this is the risk score very broadly. Um, I will touch on these in a bit more detail in the next few slides where I talk about how to actually reduce it. Um, and again, if you have any questions in the meantime, just feel free to shoot them over at me um, so I can get those answered hopefully at the end. So the main question here is, of course, how do I actually reduce my risk score? That's what it ultimately boils down to. Um, the first and main point here is to diversify. If you want to get in on the euro, but you already have a ton of other currency trades open, then you might want to expose yourself through European stocks um, or maybe even ETFs, which are, despite being risky instruments, are lower risk only in that um, your leverage available to you is not going to be as high. And what I mentioned about the uh, leverage um, and the, the uh, units being connected, oh, sorry, the, the volatility and the leverage being connected is that while a currency pair may not move 
quite as much as maybe an index or um, your what your stocks could potentially do if if something major happened with the company. Um, you don't have as much freedom with leverage as you would on a currency pair with us. Um, so that is why we we would say kind of step away a little bit from the currencies if your uh, portfolio is heavily invested in those um, and maybe look at some of the other markets where you can still dip your feet in to the, the instruments that you want. Um, so that would be the first point. The second is to hedge. Um, avoid having too much of your equity tied up in a single market uh, that is in one direction at any one time. So if, for example, you have um, maybe 10% of your equity tied up in the euro dollar, for example, but half the trades are buys and half the trades are sells, you balance yourself out and that's fine. Um, another point worth considering here is that you can also hedge yourself by using different instruments again. So if you do have a lot of trades, um, <clears throat> sorry, maybe you have a lot of trades uh, with the euro, uh, currency trades with, with the euro in them and you want to hedge with the dollar, you can get some US stocks, um, which, will, which will likely move slightly slower if you're using a reasonable uh, leverage on them. The next point is, of course, to use lower leverage. Um, where the unit size is important, um, as I've already touched on, it's even more important to cut down that leverage just because what it ultimately boils down to is the fact that you are closer to hurting your account with, with higher leverage than you are with lower leverage regardless of how much money you're putting in. And the fourth point would be to free up some of your money. Um, so have kind of in the, in the same way that the foundation of investing says not to put all your eggs in one basket, in this scenario, you leave some of your eggs at home. Um, so you want to have money available in your account. Um, you will notice with a lot of people actually, they may have um, their entire portfolio tied up in a single market, um, one direction, and uh, their risk score is still quite low. And that is purely because of the leverage. So um, while it helps to have some money free so that you can open more positions or hedge or or spice things up a little bit to to move your 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 risk or down a little bit, um, it is possible to, to do so just with your lower leverage. Um, and then the final point on this side is to simply copy someone who is getting it right if you can't. Um, you'll notice that there are multiple searches available to you um, where you can find people who are trading low risk. And if you add them to your portfolio, it should bring your own risk score down. Um, so kind of the, the essence of all of this is that the risk score uh, measures your exposure in such a way that it is essentially looking at the likelihood of actually wiping out your account. Um, so it's exactly here where um, I talk a little bit about how you will notice one person maybe 100% of their equities in Bitcoin and they have a risk score six or seven um, only because they're using maybe two leverage, um, whereas someone else might only have 10% um, of their portfolio invested in the market, but they have it at 400 leverage. So despite the, the different monetary value, they're still miles apart in terms of actually closing out. Um, what we can do actually is if you have questions, you can either ask me on here now, um, so we can get started with that if there's if there's anything that you think is relevant, um, or you can come to my feed afterwards where I will share some of the surprising instruments that are actually the riskiest. Um, one question I do have now is uh, about the stop loss. Um, which is actually completely unrelated to the risk score. So you can have your stop loss at 100% or you can have it at 
5% away from your current price and it actually doesn't influence it at all. Um, if anyone else has any other questions, just share them in the, in the chat box or in the questions section now. Is there any plans to provide the ability to see how a new trade will affect the risk score? Um, there isn't at the moment. Um, bear in mind your risk score does take a little bit of time to update. It looks slightly at the positions you have open right now, but focuses quite heavily on your history as well. So your, your risk score that you are seeing on your profile in the top right hand corner is a weekly risk score, which is the same one that pops up at the very top of your stats, um, just on top of the graph that has your monthly risk score for the past year. Do we have any other questions? Are the technical details of the risk score available? Uh, this would allow people to project their own risk scores. Right now they aren't because the calculation is so complicated and changes quite frequently because of the volatility of the markets, uh, of, the, of the specific markets. Um, as a rule of thumb, it's mostly important to think about um, how much of your money is tied up in, in a certain sector if you're trading stocks or in a certain um, currency or uh, really just an overall market when you're thinking about your risk score. So things like, um, you know, balancing different kinds of, of stocks. So maybe some tech companies with some, um, you know, services and maybe some financials thrown in there as well. Even though you're all, you, you could be all invested in stocks, you would still have that breakdown quite nicely. Um, in terms of the volatility of the markets, that's an ongoing change, which is why we haven't made the exact, um, the exact calculation available up to now because it is changing so frequently. Um, if you have any specifics that you want more information on. So if you have either someone that you are considering copying or you want to better understand your own risk score, feel free to share that with me and I can pass that along um, either to a product person or to our BI team and they will happily break it down for you and kind of explain why your risk score was at one point um, when you had certain positions open and why, where it is now and why and, and you know, We'll, we'll happily cover that. Um, another question I've got in here is about copying people with risk score eight and up. Um, we have blocked nine and ten uh, up to now purely because it's we found that there is a big um, gap between the lower risk people and these in these higher ones just in terms of history and what. Um, tends to happen with their accounts. So as I mentioned here, it is based so much on um, on how likely it is that you will blow up your account. So um, the the block on the higher risk scores is really just to avoid that happening. Um, through the years of copy trading, there have been a lot of instances where we almost saw the warning signs purely off the stats and there were no measures in place to Kind of block people off from that um, and as we sort of try to move the copy experience to something more sophisticated and something safer and more of a long-term investment then that is what we're aiming for with blocking the nine and the ten um, we did also lift some other limitations that we had which was uh, a cap on, on on how much of your equity you could copy with um, so we tried to make it more accessible and available to everyone, but it has to sort of stop somewhere so that people um, can protect their money and come in to invest and not necessarily just to day trade when copy trading. Um, so that looks like it is the last question that we have for today. Um, if there is anything slightly unrelated, I will come and cover that with you. Um, like I mentioned, head over to my wall to, to check out some of the 
the more volatile instruments, um, you will be surprised because I was as well. Um, and please do feel free to, to share any of your feedback with me. Um, let me know what you want to see in future webinars, if there is a topic that you don't quite understand, um, if there's anything that you do want me to elaborate on, both in terms of the risk score or anything else that's available. Um, and again, you will get this by email um, if you kind of want to jot down some of the points that we discussed. Um, and that is it for tonight. So thank you all for joining me and have yourselves a lovely evening.